Well, hey everybody. If you are in fact watching my video, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It's been a, I don't know how many days, a few days, three days, since I posted a video. And uh, it's been busy, you know, that's how life gets. Life gets in the way sometimes and it's just, it's been really busy. Um, <clears throat> my program is going very well. I'm uh, sticking with it. Um, <laughs> and it's become easier. You know, early on when I started this thing three weeks ago, um, I was feeling the, the withdrawal. It was tough. And I know it's only been three weeks, but, but it was tough. Uh, I would reach for a big old slab of chocolate cake or I would reach for a huge uh, cheese steak um, at 10 o'clock at night. And, uh, you know, because I would do that and munch them down. You know, I'd get up in the middle of the night, couldn't sleep, whatever, come down, make a cup of tea and say, mmm, and eat a half, three-quarter bag, bag of chips, whatever. And uh, so that kind of stuff has stopped, um, and it's gotten easier. It's gotten easier to do this program. Um, <clears throat> eating correctly, eating better, uh, eating the foods that I like, um, it's really, it's, it's, it's paying off. I'm feeling... Uh, so much better than I did and I'm, I'm sleeping better I'm feeling better even my skin feels better I know that sounds strange but but um, you know I, I, I um, I'm feeling really good and <clears throat> um, the uh, program um, being so successful with me my food you know <laughs> it's my weakness you know uh, uh, being able to cut sugar out not completely I still little dabs here and there, but cutting out all the sugar that I did eat, as well as the salt, you know, tapering the salt down. I still have salt, um, but not, not in excess like I did before. Um, <clears throat> cutting sodas out, that was easy. Sometimes you can just cut things out. I don't need to have a Coke or a Pepsi. That is something I just don't need to have. Uh, I enjoy a good uh, freshly brewed iced tea or, you know, uh, fruit juices, uh, cranberry juice, things like that, uh, orange juice. Um, uh, when I was a kid, um, we'd come in, my grandmother, she always had, you know, just like my mom too, but my grandmother, uh, you know, had juices, iced tea in the summer, you'd come in, you're hot, you're sweaty. But she would say, here, before you have a glass of juice or something, have a nice cold glass of water, and here, and she'd squeeze a lemon or two in there. She says, that lemon, it'll quench your thirst and it'll make you feel really good. And I did that and I got a taste for it. Um, and I've been drinking that my whole life. Now, I haven't done it religiously, but I've started doing that again. I brought it back. Not only is it nostalgic, but I like it. You know, you get a nice bottle of water, drink a little bit out of it, and then squeeze a lemon or a couple wedges of lemon in there. And it's really good. It does quench your thirst. Um, and it's good for you, too. It's really good for you too. So anyway, that's going really well. And um, today I wanted to speak, you know, since school is right around the corner, and it's literally right around the corner because this time next week, um, it's Sunday today, uh, it will be, you know, I'll have one more day and then we go back to school. And if you see a tear during this thing, just, just ignore it. Um, but yeah, so we go back to 21st. So I want to speak a little bit about something. And, um, this is kind of geared towards the new teachers, the newbies, you know, um, the, not the ones who are new in a school, but you've been teaching the newbies. This will be your first or second or third year as a school teacher in whatever grade, but, um, you know. I'm specifically, if I keep making these videos, most of my videos will be probably towards the newbies. Um, as a teacher, one thing, no matter what teach grade you teach, you can't forget what it was like to be the age of the kids you teach. I teach 10, 11, and 12 year olds, uh, mostly 10, 10, 11. Uh, I remember distinctly, specifically, what it was to be in fifth grade, what it was to be 10 or 11. I remember, and uh, I remember what it was like to sit in a classroom. I remember what it was like to have those teachers who you, 
uh, who you loved and those teachers who maybe you didn't hate them but you just could care less you could just couldn't wait to get out of their classroom and uh, you know as a newbie um, certainly you're going to want to be the teacher where the kids are just all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed um, and I'm sure they will be but um, I also remember what it was to be a new teacher I remember being so excited I couldn't wait to get into my classroom. I couldn't wait to decorate it. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. I was so excited. And uh, so I have a great affinity. I have a great love for all of you, all of the newbies out there watching this video. Um, even if you're not watching the video, I still love you. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Smarter Balance State Testing. Now, if you read the paper, I read it online now. I read the hard copy paper, um, you know, the journal and Delaware State News up to about a year ago until I realized I can just read these things on my phone. So anyway, the scores have come out and uh, a few days ago, no surprise, um, you know, they're not the best in the world. Now I'm, I'm speaking for Delaware, um, primarily Smyrna, but Delaware, you know, the scores aren't the best. You know, once again, you know, score-wise, we they took the scores, fashioned it into a paddle, and spanked us a little bit. They just weren't the best. Some districts went down, while other districts went up as far as the Smarter Balance testing scores go. You know, the one test a year that all districts take. Um, kudos and shout-outs to Laurel. I think it was Laurel's, Laurel School District. Who their scores were kind of down and under in the in the 20 to 30 percent proficient or something they jumped up 20 and 30 uh, percent they did wonderful things whatever they did i have no doubt that other districts are going to be tapping them knocking on their door to find out what did you do what did you do different that bumped up your scores so high and uh, it's in the paper. If you read the paper, the, they talked to the superintendent, and the superintendent kind of explained how, which, what the superintendent felt was the reason why their scores bumped up, what they did. But newbie, the fact of the matter is, no matter what you do, from my point of view, I can tell you, we make sure that our students are not only ready for this test, but they're ready for anything. Now, I'm a fifth grade teacher. My students are ready for anything fifth grade throws at them, no matter what it is, and more so. And, you know, so every teacher has to teach a certain amount of standards, certain specific standards for every grade level, from first grade to 12th grade. So first grade teacher has these certain standards they must teach their students. It, it, it will say, um, First graders, by the end of first grade, students will know bibbity bobbity boop and it's the same for every grade. So, by the time the DSTP comes, and it's always in the spring, it begins in uh, March and ends, the window I think is open until June, end of May, something. So we, we take our test and we figure out what's the best way to take it, what's the best strategy, do we take it a, a, a bit at a time, an increment at a time, instead of bombarding the testing all in one week. You know, we're trying to figure out how, how can we do it so that it's best for the students. Sometimes I'm thinking that the thinking is, instead of what's best for the students, what's best for the, to, so that we can get the better scores. Um, I can say that our uh, district, that our school specifically, um, we geared ours towards the betterment of our students. We kind of spaced it out. So it wasn't all kind of in one lump sum. We spaced it out. And that, that did help. It, it, it helps because it keeps things on a chill level. It keeps things, um, it keeps things okay. Kids are already nervous enough about this thing. and. Uh, you know, um, as a newbie, that's something, too, you've got to be aware of. You've got to, as important as this thing is made out to be, we cannot, um, and, and even if you're against it, 
uh, even if I'm against it, the state, the whole state testing thing and all the pressures put on the kids and teachers and everything. Um, we still have to make it a part of our classroom. Now, that's where the standards come in. Teaching the standards is easy, newbies. It truly is. That's the easiest part of our vocation, is teaching the standards, you know. Um, it's the other part of teaching, the grander part, the best part, but it's also the most challenging part about our profession, you know. Uh, getting these kids to feel safe, getting them to be thinkers, getting them to be mountain movers, getting them to feel comfortable in their own skin, getting them to be happy to be at school because the majority of them would rather be any place else. So, we're, so I was too. But when you have that one particular teacher or two, when you get into older grades or three, you look forward to going to that classroom, it makes a difference. It does. Because when you're there, you're a kid, and you like what's happening, you're going to open yourself up more. But if you go already set to where you already hate the environment, you hate where you, then you're already starting to close yourself off. So newbies, um, we just need to make sure that as the year progresses and the next state testing trials come up, uh, we can't pound the kids in the head. All right. That being said, um, this year, uh, with the new scores that have come out, and they're not, like I said, as, as, as good as, I guess, um, the DOE or whoever wants them to be. Chances are real good. Um, the first week back, we're going to be have, where you'll have staff meetings, you'll have PLCs, you'll have uh, leadership meetings, you'll have uh, in-services, you'll have, and most, 99% of all of that will be geared towards how can we get our scores better. You're going to be looking at past data. You're going to be looking at data, data, data. What can we do that we didn't do last year? Blah, blah, blah. Well, we could go down and talk to Laurel and we could find out. We could. We could find out what what they did. You know? Did they um, hire... I, I, I don't know what... It's in the paper. I To tell you the truth, I'm trying to think of what it was. But whatever it is, we, we've had people in our own district, in our own schools, you know, where their students, um, you know, their percentage, per, percent of proficient proficiency was grand and big and high and it was awesome and you're so happy for them and then you look at yours and yours may not be up there with that you know and you're wondering what did they do that I didn't do well you can go find out talk to the teacher what did they do and it's great if you try to then the next year do what they did but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to work ladies and gentlemen the fact of the matter is you could be the best teacher there ever was. Your kids could love you and you will love them and you go through the whole year and then we get to March and April and it's your time to test for the smarter balance and you get those laptops in your classroom where you take your class to a lab and you, you, you know they have the knowledge in their heads. They know they have the knowledge in their heads. They have the little snacks and they were given the little incentives and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, because we're the human animal, <laughs> anything can happen that day. Anything can impact the way a test, the outcome of a test, anything. You know, if uh, one particular kid isn't having a great day, something happened at home, one kid isn't feeling well, one kid is incredibly nervous, one kid overthinks and second guesses, test, some kids have high test anxiety, it could be a number, it could be a million different things. When this whole thing started with the DSTP, the, they said that by 2014, uh, by 2014, 100% proficient. That all children in the nation would be at 100% proficiency. That's ridiculous. All of us, all teachers, all anyone who was an educator at that time, it was a collective jaw drop. How in the name of God can you say that? <laughs>
What I'm saying is this. When you get to school and you hear scores were okay, but they weren't the best, so what are we going to do this year to make them even better? Every year it's the same thing. What are we going to do to make it even better? Well, I can tell you last year I had a great year. 99% of my kids made honor roll. 99% of my kids made honor roll every single marking period. They worked hard. They did their projects. They wrote. They read. They tested on weekly tests. They quizzed. We talked. We discussed. They learned. They had a grand year. They had a great year. They had an, an abundant year. And yet, you know. And I'm, I'm saying that's my kids. I guarantee that everyone in my school had the same kind of year and would venture to say that every other school did too. You know, you look at the one grade, a one, a two, or three, or four, for the uh, Smarter Balance, and then you look at all the grades that those kids earned for every marking period. You got 20 to 30 grades for reading and this whatever. For, for You got grammar, you got math, you got social studies, you have science, you have writing. And the kids have done so great, and yet they say that the scores aren't as uh, they, they stayed steady or, or they're not up to where they wish they were, something like that. Mm. Well, you can't let it get you down. You can't let it allow you to, make, to feel less than because you're not. You go into your classroom this year, you go in like a lion, and you stay that way. You remain, you stay tough, but you are adaptable and pliant. You love your kids, they'll love you back. You have some fun every chance you get. Get those kids laughing. 